Welcome to the Engine of Evolutionary Change activity training video. Through this activity, participants will learn how evolution works by simulating two forces of evolution on a population. The two forces we will be simulating are natural selection and genetic drift. Natural selection is the process by which the traits of some individuals in a population allow them to survive and reproduce more effectively than others. Genetic drift arises due to random changes in the genetic composition of a population from one generation to the next. To start, explain to the participant that DNA is found in living organisms and some of that DNA is composed of genes. Genes carry genetic information that makes you, you. Traits like height, eye color, whether or not you can roll your tongue, are all influenced by the types of genes you carry. We call different types or forms of genes alleles. You may have an allele that confers blue eyes, while someone else may have an allele that confers brown eyes. We get alleles from our parents, one from mom and one from dad. New alleles can be created by a mutation in DNA, and some mutations can cause dramatic changes. Scientists have found many interesting cases in natural populations where a single DNA mutation can have important consequences for evolution. For this activity, you will need a large, flat, clean surface. The alleles, which can be any object where you have four colors of 15. Candy is usually the best, but beads will work too. A clear container, an opaque container, a tablet with a spreadsheet application. If you don't have a tablet, a whiteboard and a calculator will be needed. You will start with 60 individuals of the same species, 15 of each allele. In this example, I'm using beads, but using different colors of candy is preferable. Make sure to first mix up all the alleles and then you can impose selection. Here, I am a predator that is eating individuals that have the blue and red allele. I have eaten four blue individuals and four red individuals. Next, we remove these from the population then count up how many individuals are left that will contribute to the next generation. Because we are keeping the population size constant, we need to do a little algebra to get the allele frequencies of the next generation. Feel free to use an Excel spreadsheet to make the calculations a little easier. For each set, we divide the number of remaining beads by the total left over then multiply by 60 to get the frequencies in the next generation. Do the same process two to three more times with the new population and be sure to keep track of how the allele frequencies are changing. Here, the y-axis is number of alleles and the x-axis is number of generations. Focusing only on the blue and orange, we can see that the blue is decreasing in frequency and the orange is increasing. So the question is, did this population evolve? The definition of evolution is simply a change in the genetic composition of a population over time. Did the genetic composition change? It did. We now have more orange alleles and less blue alleles after four generations. In order to simulate genetic drift, you would do the exact same process as with selection, but instead have the participant blindly select the alleles. It's important to not be able to see the alleles, so I recommend using opaque material on the container. After running the simulation under drift conditions, we can ask the same question. Did evolution occur? It did, in a random fashion. Whether the allele frequency increased or decreased was entirely due to chance. To help with activity engagement, Ask the participant to speculate on ways selection and drift might occur in natural populations. 
they're having trouble, you may want to point them towards predation or climate change as general pressures that would translate to selection and natural disasters that may translate to drift. Before the activity starts, have them make a prediction about how they think the alleles will change over time differently for selection versus drift simulations. Finally, as the activity progresses, make sure the participant can visualize the progress from one generation to the next by tracking in real time how alleles are changing. This can be done with the graphing function on a spreadsheet app or drawn manually on the whiteboard. After the activity, you can tell the participant that all natural populations will experience drift and selection to some extent, some populations more than others. Also, there are other forces of evolution that we did not simulate, but are important, migration and mutation. Finally, have the participant speculate on other ways these forces could influence evolution of a population. Good luck with the activity.